high carbohydrate foods to avoid and how to cut back on carbs and limit carbs altogether. The two questions I get asked about frequently, I'm finally here to address them. And while the low carb lifestyle may be the most popular form of dieting as it can help you feel healthier or lose weight, at least in the beginning, there are certain things you should make sure you're doing to maintain as healthy of a diet as possible while figuring out which high carb foods to cut back on. So you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned till the end. Hi guys, you've seen our salon Media Pharmacist here on YouTube where I help you guys make better and more informed decisions about your health and wellness. So if that's something you're into, be sure to smash that like button below now. Also while you're at it, hit that subscribe button too and don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's face it, you're probably looking this up because you've heard that a low carb diet can help you lose weight and control diabetes and other conditions. And yes, both these things are true. You will lose weight and reap some benefits. And there's some high carb foods that are very obvious that you should limit or even avoid altogether, such as sugary drinks, cake, and candy. Those are obvious and won't be discussed. The tricky part comes down to figuring out which staple foods to limit, as some of these foods are even relatively healthy, but only unsuitable due to their high number of carbs. What's a high number of carbs anyway? Glad you asked, because you can't really discuss which foods to avoid without looking at the numbers and target ranges first. So let's start out with the good old American diet. The typical American diet is more than 250 grams of carbs per day, which is way too high for most people who are trying to lose weight, especially with those who have diabetes. A higher carb intake makes controlling glucose and losing weight more of a challenge. The second range is the recommended dietary allowance for carbs, and that is around 130 grams per day. The number is based on the amount of carbohydrates that is required to provide the brain with adequate glucose. This is a number I keep in the back of my head because while there's no def definitive standard of a low carb diet, less than 130 grams per day is often considered low carb by medical professionals because it's below the RDA. And lastly, less than 50 grams of carbs per day is considered a very low carb diet. Even though at around this range, you might, you may still be able to improve glycemic control and cause weight loss. It's not recommended as a healthy long-term diet because at this low level of carb intake, it can get quite challenging to have a diet variety in between adequate fiber in your diet. Now that we got the ranges out of the way, let's look at what foods are high in carbs that you should cut back on if you're reducing your carb intake. And for the purpose of making this video not to drag on forever, I'll keep the list to 10 foods, and the first one being acai bowls. Smoothie bowls in general. It doesn't matter what it is, eating too much of anything prom promises unwanted consequences, and that goes for fruit as well. Now don't get me wrong, fruit is incredibly healthy, but an issue arises when you have too much blended fruit without any digestion slowing, blood sugar balancing fiber, fats, and protein. The result is a huge whack of carbs like the 102 grams of carbs and the 70 grams of sugar you find in Java's Island Potato Bowl. Number two, bagels. Even before the butter, jam, or cream cheese, a bagel could pack 250 to 300 calories and a whopping 30 to 50 grams of carbs. That makes a morning bagel significantly more carbed up than a serving of white flour pasta. Number three, white bread. Made with starchy and rich flour instead of healthy whole grains, just one slice is packed with 14 grams of carbs and has very little fiber that keeps you feeling full. What's even worse is that the refined white flour in white bread has been linked to heart disease and type 2 diabetes, not just weight gain. So if you're looking for an alternative, make your own low carb loaves at home. Number four, coffee drinks. Now don't get me wrong, coffee is great for your health and weight loss goals as long as you don't overdo it and you know your way around it. What I mean is not coffee itself but how it's decorated at chain stores to make it more of a dessert than just a boring old cup of joe. Now, I love drinking coffee, not only for its numerous health benefits, it's a virtually calorie-free boost to your metabolism, but the variations you see in today's world make it so unhealthy. I'm talking about 400 calories and 60 to 80 grams of carbs per serving. Ever heard of McDonald's caramel frappe? A large puts you back 670 calories, 27 grams of fat, 200 milligrams of sodium, and 96 grams of carbs. 
Number five, vegetables. Not all just the starchy ones. Many vegetables are very high in fiber, which can aid weight loss and blood sugar control. However, some high starch vegetables contain more digestible carbs than fiber and should be limited on the low carb diet. The two I'm talking about are corn as one cup provides 41 grams of carbs and potatoes as one medium potato provides 37 grams of carbs. So instead, it's best to choose mostly non-starchy, high-fiber vegetables when limiting your carb intake. Number six, juice. Surprisingly, juice is one of the worst beverages you can drink on a low-carb diet. Although it provides some nutrients, fruit juice is very high in fast-digesting carbs that cause your blood sugar to increase rapidly. I'll give you an example. Just 12 ounces of apple juice harbors 48 grams of carbs, which is even more than some sodas. Also on this note, juice is another example of liquid carbs that your brain's appetite center may not process in the same way as solid carbs, which means you may feel hungrier later on in the day. Number seven, cereals. Refined ones, especially since they are the source of nutritionally void carbs, topped with a ton of sugar that creates even more trouble for your waistline. Raisin bran at 45 grams, frosted mini wheats at 48 grams, and oatmeal crisp at 46 grams, all top the list of the most carbed up cereals. Instead, if you can, opt in for steel cut oatmeal or choose a cereal that is low sugar and high fiber instead. Number eight, pasta. One cup at roughly 250 grams of cooked pasta contains 43 grams of carbs of only three which are fiber. You see, on a low carb diet, eating spaghetti or other types of pasta isn't a good idea unless you consume a very small portion, which isn't realistic for most people because pasta is just one of those foods that you can easily overdo, especially here. Number nine, sweetened yogurt. Plain yogurt is fairly low in carbs and many people tend to eat fruit flavored sweet and low fat or non-fat yogurt and surprisingly sweetened yogurt often contains as many carbs as a dessert. One cup of non-fat sweetened fruit yogurt can have 47 grams of carbs which is even higher than a comparable serving of ice cream. So as an alternative if you can try a half a cup of plain Greek yogurt topped with half a cup of blackberries or raspberries to keep digestible carbs under 10 grams. And lastly, number 10, tortillas. A common misconception is that they're healthier for you than bread, but there are 35 grams of carbs in a 10 inch white tortilla wrap. And if you take a closer look at the nutrition label, you'll find that many varieties are loaded with calories and chemicals like L-cysteine, which is used as a dough conditioner made from human hair or chicken feathers. So if you're looking for an alternative, restock your shelves with whole grain bread that's free of high fructose corn syrup as well, because you definitely want to be limiting that too. Now I think it's super important to note that severe carb restriction can cause your body to break fat down into ketones for energy. This is called ketosis, which we start to see under the 50 grams of carbs mark. Ketosis can cause side effects such as bad breath, headache, fatigue, and weakness. So definitely let your doctor know before you make a drastic cut in carbohydrates. Also, it's not clear what kind of possible long-term health risks a low-carb diet may pose, but if you are restricting carbs in the long term, then they may result in vitamin or mineral deficiency and gastrointestinal disturbances. So this is why some health care experts believe that if you eat large amounts of fat and protein from let's say animal sources your risk of heart disease or certain cancers may actually increase so if you do opt to follow a low carb diet pay attention to the fats and proteins you choose and be an informed consumer this includes saturated and trans fats too so all in all when following a low carb diet it's important to choose foods that are highly nutritious but low in carbs some foods should be minimized while others avoided altogether. Your choices will largely depend on part on your personal carb tolerance. So if you have any tips or tricks that you know of, please leave them in the comments below. And that's it guys. I hope that this video helps give you a better understanding on which foods to avoid on a low carb diet. Let me know if any of these surprised you as well. I also hope that this video was insightful to you guys. The only thing I ask in return is just a simple like down below for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for sticking tuned all the way till the end. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.